and welcome, a very warm welcome to The Green Bean. My name is Katie, this is Jack, and we're coming to you from the Benai Brecheniog National Park in South Wales. Um, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us. You might expect this episode to have some updates on the various projects I've been sharing recently. I've been working on a new sheep tea towel design on Scratchboard, and there are a few different knitting projects I've introduced you to lately, all of which are still on the needles making incremental progress. But I've got something a little bit different in store for today's episode. Um, creativity is a non-linear process and I am always working on all sorts of different things at the same time. Um, even within my crafts, um, knitting or sewing is rare for me to have only one project going on, but when it comes to illustration I've always got lots of different, um, what do they say, different irons in the fire. There are always different things going on and I wanted to dip into something else that's been happening in my studio lately and share that with you in this episode. I wanted to share this drawing project with you that you can probably tell I've been working on for quite some considerable time already. And if you receive my um, newsletter, you will already know that I've been giving myself an imaginary artist residency. I've always fancied the idea of an artist residency, which is to say, an extended period of time to really dive into a particular product, project or artistic practice um, without any specific goal in mind, but the exploration of one's own art making. Um, the reality is, as someone with a busy life and an online shop and lots of other commitments, I can't really just um, 
disappear from my regular routine to do that. So I've been crafting an imaginary residency for myself where I carve out a little bit of time here and there whenever I can, even if it's just 10, 15 minutes, once or twice a week, to really dive in. And it will surprise absolutely no one that the subject I've been diving into is lichens. <laughs> up this twig a couple of months ago out on a walk and um, it had fallen on the ground after a storm and I just picked it up. It, the lichens on it caught my eye and I was absolutely astonished. The closer I looked, the more different varieties and textures I seemed to see. I could not believe the variety of life that was growing on this one single twig. And I have to say, it's not as fabulous as it was. I've now had it in my studio for a couple of months, although I've been putting it back outside whenever the weather's been damp in the hope of keeping these lichens alive and flourishing. Some of them have perished since falling from the tree. They're obviously not in the right environment anymore, but some of them are still looking pretty good. Um, the twig has since broken in two. Um, but nonetheless, it's still absolutely fascinating to look at. And I started this little project of drawing tiny vignettes, um, tiny little illustrations based on viewing this twig through my magnifying glass. And it was never my intention when I started, but I've ruled out this grid of a hundred different little windows and I feel absolutely no doubt that I can draw 100 different illustrations from this one single twig. And that's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? To think that there's that much detail and that much fascination to enjoy in such a tiny specimen. And then to think that lichens are growing on almost every tree, every twig, every rock around where I live, um, to think that every tiny surface could be worthy of that level of study and fascination is, is amazing and exciting to me. It's been such a gift to myself to really get stuck into drawing these lichens. I'm always looking at lichens when I'm out walking, um, always spotting different specimens, my favourites, but I've never spent this long looking at such a tiny space. And 
the more I look, the more there is to find. I've done about 40 of my 100 drawings so far and I'm nowhere near exhausted. At first I was a little bit worried when the twigs started to perish. I thought, oh gosh, now I need to hurry up and try and finish this project. But now I realise that's kind of the opposite of my intention and actually what I'm creating is a piece of artwork that documents the time that it's taken to make it and if my twig and my lichens perish and um, kind of start to disassemble over that time and my illustrations can capture that in some way then that's all part of the joy and beauty of this observational project. Essentially, what I'm creating is a comic, a comic that documents my intensive study of this one single twig. And that wasn't what I intended when I started this imaginary residency, but I'm just going with the flow and enjoying every single moment that I'm spending making these drawings. <laughs> What's the longest you've ever left a project hibernating for before picking it back up and finishing it? Um, I know for me that the longer a project sits abandoned in storage without being attended to and loved, the more likelihood it, there is that I'm just not going to finish it at all. Um, if, if I do return to it, then it's most likely that I will take it apart, reclaim those materials and turn them into something else. But the project I'm holding in my hands right now is an exception to that. Um, it's certainly a project that has featured in my videos before, but not for a very long time. I believe the last time I worked on this project was in 2020. Um, and it has been in deep storage since then. Um, it's always a mystery to me the reasons why certain projects get set aside and other projects uh, hold your attention until being finished. It's not always because I'm bored. I think in this case it was a couple of factors. I had another design that I was working on that I was trying to finish and also the, um, the yarn that I'm using this is for a design, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. The yarn that I'm using wasn't due for another batch to be spun for a while. So as as a design to be released out into the world, I had to 
kind of put it to rest for a while and concentrated on other things. I cast other projects on and so this one got left to the wayside a bit. I'm just going to hold it up so you can have a look. Can you remember it from when it was last in my videos? This is a design of mine called the Lycan Fancier cardigan. It's completely based on and inspired by my love and fascination with lichens and uh, what can I say? It was left in hibernation about this point. I think I'd knitted about six inches from the ribbing on the body. So since picking it up again I've made a huge amount of progress. What, you may ask, has motivated me to make this kind of progress? Well, I have been offered the opportunity to work with a photographer whose work I admire very, very much later this month. And um, I'm sort of hoping that I might be able to finish the garment and get it photographed then. It's possibly unrealistic. There is a lot of knitting still to be done on the body and the design has two full colourwork sleeves as well. So it may not be possible, but I'm certainly going to give it my best effort. Um, and even if it doesn't come together, it's still nice to have had the motivation to pick up this project, make some progress on it, and um, start the process of bringing this design out into the world, because, because I think it's time. So the yarn I'm using is a 100% breed-specific Jacob yarn from Rivenitz. It's the same yarn that I used as the main yarn on my Beetle Magic jumper. And this yarn comes in two different base colours because um, Jacob sheep have two different colours. They're uh, brown and white spotty. And what Marcus and Becky do at Rivenitz is grade the fleeces into those two separate colours and have them spun as two separate base colours. So we've got the main colour for my cardigan is this natural um, brown and the contrast colour is a special colourway called Lycan Fancier that Becky dyed specifically for this project that's dyed on the natural white base. And I love how these two colours play together. The contrast is just right. Um, and I've already got the buttons picked out for this cardigan as well. These came from Maggie at Textile Garden, whom I get all of my buttons from, from my projects. She always has the most beautiful selection. I'm, um, I've never found that I can't find just the right button from Maggie. So I was really pleased to find these ones, which are a really good match. This is going to be an all over colour work cardigan, so I wanted to knit it in the round, which means there are steaks for the armholes. They're closed at the moment, but once this is blocked and finished, I will cut them open. And then the same for the sleeves, as they will be knitted in the round from the cuff upwards, but then the sleeve cap will be, um, it will have a steak as well, which I will cut open and then seam the sleeves into place. The reason I do that with steaks is because knitting colour work in the round is far preferable to knitting colour work flat. It means you've always got the right side of your work facing you as you're working, which makes it much easier to follow the charts, not to mention managing the two different colours of yarn as you're working your way around your project. Thank you. 
It's been such a long time since I've had a sewing project to share with you here in these videos. I have not set up a sewing space in my new house yet and I do find myself wondering how long I can call it my new house. We've now lived here for six months. Um, yes, everything is still in boxes. The house is a huge renovation project so it's going to be a work in progress for a long time. Um, nonetheless, I was feeling frustrated and the need to be sewing, um, so I've just decided to give up, clear my order packing table for a day and get to work on a sewing project. Now, the project I'm working on is directly related to the like and fancy a cardigan that I've been knitting. Um, as if I didn't have enough work to do busting a gut trying to get that cardigan finished in time for photography, I decided I needed a new garment to wear with it as well. Looking through my wardrobe, I didn't really have anything quite the right colour palette. Everything's a little bit green and towards the yellowish spectrum of green, whereas the colour in this is more towards the blue end. So I decided I needed to make something from scratch and I found this beautiful pale blue-green corduroy. It's not an exact match for the like and fancier colour from Rivenitz, but it's tonally pretty close and I think it's going to make a really nice piece to go with this cardigan. I had a hard time deciding what exactly I was going to make to go with this cardigan. I couldn't choose basically between a skirt or trousers. I've generally been gravitating more towards trousers and dungarees lately, but stylistically I felt like a skirt would be a better match for this cardigan. So I chatted with my lovely friend Angela and she came up with the suggestion that was half and half. How about culottes to go with this cardigan? And uh, I've never made a pair of culottes before. I don't have a pattern. So um, wish me luck, I guess. I'm starting with my dungaree shorts pattern as a basis and I'm going to draft uh, just some wider legs to those shorts and see how they turn out. I am going to make a muslin first just to see what it's like. If it's a complete disaster I will fall back on the dungaree shorts. They have been one of the most successful sewing projects I've ever made in terms of fit and comfort and how much I'm wearing them so I know that they will be a good addition to my wardrobe. Um, so that's what I'll make if this self-drafting culottes adventure doesn't quite work out but if it does work out um, I think it's going to be fun and cute and look really good with the cardigan so please keep fingers crossed for me because I'm just uh, doing this on a bit of a whim and it might not work out but um, hopefully it will. <laughs>
Before I go and before I forget, let me tell you about what I'm wearing because I always forget. Um, if you ever wonder, by the way, I try and leave notes about what I'm wearing in the description box below my videos because I don't always remember to tell you, but seeing as I have remembered today, this cardigan is my Dijon Foray cardigan by Carol Sunday, and I knitted it last year in two yarns from John Arban Textiles held together. The pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn, and I used a sport weight and a light fingering weight held together. So the main yarn is Yarnadelic, which is 100% Corydale, and I used the colour Sunflowers in My Garden, and the second yarn is Alpaca Supreme in the colour Kyanite, which is a pale greenish grey. I unusually followed the pattern exactly as it was written, and I love how this cardigan came out. It's one of my favourite pieces. I'm wearing it almost all the time, so I thought I would take a chance to, um, to let you know about it again. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Green Bean. I love having the opportunity to sit here and share my creative projects with you. None of this would be possible, however, without the support I receive from folks over on Patreon. Um, I shared last time, it takes me about three days to put one of these episodes together between filming the outdoor footage, filming indoors, editing and subtitling. And while I love the whole process of crafting these videos, it is time consuming and it is my job. So huge thanks to um, everyone on Patreon who supports, is part of this community of making these videos possible. I couldn't do it without you. And if you like my videos and feel able to support, please consider heading over to Patreon. I offer lots of different benefits from early access and ad-free access to um, extra episodes every month for patrons only and discounts in my shop. But if Patreon isn't your thing, uh, you'd rather make a one-off donation, there's also a link down below to my Ko-fi account where you can buy me a cuppa or buy Jack a biscuit. And all of that goes towards keeping these videos sustainable um, and making more videos for you. You can also support my work by shopping in my shop, the link's down below, and signing up to my newsletter where I share more insights and chatter about my creative process and what's going on in my studio. Thank you also to Will McNichol, whose beautiful guitar music accompanies my episodes. Um, I don't think they'd be the same without it. So if you like the music, I urge you to go and check out Will's work. He's got lots of tracks um, and albums available. A very talented guitarist, and um, I'm sure you would enjoy giving him a listen. I think that's all for this episode. Thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and I hope whatever you're working on with your creative projects that it is going smoothly. I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you.